when people think of hypnosis, I think they think of stage hypnosis. What's the real deal? Why is it useful? And, and how do people actually use it? Yeah. So um, I'm really glad you asked about this. So I have a colleague, his name is David Spiegel in our department of psychiatry at Stanford. And he and I have a collaboration going now looking at how respiration or breathing can be used to shift the brain into different states. And um, I've talked to David about this. And so I'm sort of borrowing from his words here. So I want to be fair that these are from those conversations. So hypnosis inevitably involves relaxing the nervous system, taking the nervous system into states that are more like sleep. Now, what I mean by that is in high alert states where you're talking and planning and in action and stress in particular, the brain is very linear. It's saying, okay, if this, then this, if then, then that. This is why we tend to be forward thinking when we're, when we're stressed. We tend to be not in our immediate experience, but really kind of forward thinking. So clinical hypnosis involves going into a state of deeper relaxation so that our analysis of space and time, meaning the way that the brain is perceiving events, is slightly dismantled so that it's a little bit dreamlike. And then the hypnotist, and this could be by listening to a script or listening to a ther hypnotherapist, starts to narrow our context, take our thoughts, if you will, it, down a particular path. And that path could be one of um, stress reduction or a smoking cessation. Um, hypnosis is, incidentally is very good for treatment of smoking cessation or for feelings of well-being or confronting traumas. So what it is, is it's really opening up the window for neural plasticity, which is, of course, the brain's ability to change in response to experience. To trigger neural plasticity, you have to have focus, especially as an adult. You need acetylcholine released. But high levels of attention, acetylcholine and norepinephrine together, norepinephrine to create that sense of urgency and acetylcholine to bring that spotlight of focus in really, really tight. That triggers plasticity, but the actual, it marks certain synapses in the brain for change, but the actual changes in the synapses, the rewiring, okay, that happens during states of sleep and deep rest. Mm. So this is why when you're trying to learn a motor skill, you go and you go in your tennis serve, it's not happening, it's not happening, you take a break, you come back and you nail it. You're like, wait, what happened? Well, you need time to, to set those circuits in motion and allow them to do to the rewire and the sort of adaptation. Hypnosis seems to capture both the high attentional state and the deep relaxation at the same time. It's this very unusual state of mind where you're neither asleep nor awake and in tight focus or narrow focus. And it's very clear that it leads to these rapid changes in behavior because you're rewiring the brain. And the reason you're re able to rewire the brain so quickly is because you're getting the trigger event, the focus, and you're also getting the relaxation event simultaneously. And so it's much faster than separating out the learning trigger from the actual rewiring of the brain. My lab has a deep interest and David Spiegel's lab has a deep interest now in using respiration or breathing to shift our state to either heighten states of focus and alertness to open up neural plasticity. 